Hey everyone, Brian Henderson with Liberty Laundry. So I had somebody ask me recently, how about modeling Dexter equipment? This is the fifth video in my series of videos about how, how to use SketchUp to design a laundromat. We use Speed Queen in our stores because, well, we like Speed Queen and also our distributor is about a mile away from one of our locations, uh, but many people use Dexter. So let me show you how I would go about modeling that. Okay, so right here is the Dexter.com website, and I'm looking at one of the models of equipment. This is the T300, which is a 20-pound washer, and right there are the dimensions I'm going to need, as well as an image of the equipment. Very, um, very considerate of Dexter to post that for us to borrow, so I'm going to right-click this image, choose Save Image As, and save it as the, just the T300, however you want to label it. Next, I'm going to open up a photo editing program like Photoshop. It doesn't have to be Photoshop, but um, that's what I have on my computer. I'm going to open up that image right there. All right, we're going to need to crop this image just a little bit to make it usable for our 3D model. So I'm going to use the cropping tool. And again, you don't have to use Photoshop. I just already had this on my computer. There are many free online photo editing, editing programs that um, are just as good. Okay, that's a usable image, and now we're going to resize this image to the actual dimensions of the machine. So I'm looking at 26 inches wide by 43 and 7 eighths inches high, and sure enough, since that, that's close enough for our model, um, notice how this is linked, it changed the height relative to the width, and since I typed in 26 inches, that's pretty close. I probably don't have this image cropped just perfect, or the image wasn't taken, you know, straight on, um, but it's awful close. It's going to work well. And the important thing is we got about the right width and all of that. Okay. All right. If I took off constrained proportions, I could type in exactly what I needed. Let's see, 7 eighths, that's 0.875, so I could do 43.875. Okay. And it zoomed way in, but let's put it on the screen. And there we go. So now this image actually is the exact width and height we need, 26 inches wide by 43 and 7 eighths inches high. Okay, I'm going to save this as a JPEG. That's important. Um, and I have a folder here that I just labeled surfaces, and I'm going to name it uh, T300. Okay, all right. Very good. Now we're going to jump into SketchUp. And now we're going to draw our big old box. Um, using the rectangle tool, or I can press R on my keyboard, I'm simply going to type in the dimensions. I clicked once, and I'm moving my mouse over. I'm not dragging. I'm not holding my finger down on the mouse. I just click once, moving it on over. And I'm going to type in 26 inches. If you look in the bottom right corner, you can see me typing this in by 25 inches. Enter. Okay, it looks like it's a little bit wider than it is that way, so I'm going to guess... Actually, no, it is wider than it is deep. Interesting. Okay. And now I'm going to use the push-pull tool to push this on up to a height of 43 space 7 eighths inches. Enter. All right. That is dimensionally accurate. That is the size of the Dexter T300. So how do we get a face on it? Well, we're going to go to File, Import, and now we're going to bring in that picture that we just saved. Let me go to my Surfaces folder. And also file type. Remember how I said to save it as a JPEG? There it is right there. I'm going to look for that T300 that I saved. I'm overlooking it, aren't I? There it is. <laughs> Use as image. Open. And let's see that blue dot in the corner. I'm going to go right down to this corner. Click. And drag it on up over to here. And why is it... Oh, no! <laughs> let's try that again. Hey, that's just a practice run. I do that a lot. All right. File. Import. T300. Open. There we go. Much better. And do you see how it fit that box just perfectly? Because I made the dimensions of my image that exact size. You can kind of fake it sometimes and kind of stretch or squish pictures, but I like making it just the right size. The rest of the cabinet, let's make it a dark gray. I'm just going to highlight it using my select tool, clicked and dragged to highlight the whole thing. Use the bucket tool here, and let's choose a dark color. 
How about this dark gray light here? Yeah, a little bit lighter. Or if I wanted to go real fancy, I could choose some metal uh, material. Oh, no, that looks terrible. That's a little bit better. Eh. <laughs> oh, well. It's your 3D model. Do whatever you want to with it. Now, I don't know if Dexters go on a steel base or not. I suppose they do. So what we could do is make this into its own component or make it into a group. A group is something that exists within this model. A component is something you can save uh, outside of your model that you have right here, and you can import components into your models. Just a little bit of terminology there. So let's, I just made it a group, and now I'm going to draw a steel base. Again, let's see, 26 inches wide by 25 inches deep. And then use my push-pull tool and bring it up, oh, let's say six inches. I'm just guessing. I don't have any experience with Dexters personally outside of looking at, at the uh, trade shows, but that's all right. Okay. Colors. Let's make it a dark gray, shall we? All right. And make this into a group. Now, if I try moving this vertically to lift it up and over onto here, you might run into a problem. And sometimes that's a terminology called glue. It's glued to the surface. Uh, let me just try moving it straight vertical. It looks like it's going well. If it doesn't easily move along the vertical axis for you, you might have to right-click it and choose unglue. See how it's grayed out here? If I had another um, surface that... Whoop, stay. If I had another surface that it was sitting on and then I drew it, it might have issues because it would be glued to the surface. Because I didn't have anything below it, then that's why I'm not having any issues. But I'm going to use the Move tool, grab a corner here, lift it up and over, and plop it right down on top of there. Yeah, you can tell I don't have any experience with Dexter's. I don't even know if it uses a steel base or not. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I've got this item right here. Now I want to save it as component for later use. One quick thing I'm going to do is add some little, little bit of text on top of this. Let's call it a 20 pound washer. Okay, and we're going to place it across the top. And I'm going to shrink it a little bit using the scale tool. I can press S to jump to that real quick. And I could just shrink it on down like that. Okay, and then move tool, kind of center it a little bit. Looks good. Bucket tool, color it, a dark color. All right, so now whenever I'm viewing it from the top, it's a lot easier to identify what I'm looking at. I'm going to highlight this whole thing, right click it, make component. I'm going to name this the T300. And I've just saved that component for importing into a future model. And let me show you how that works. So, um, All right, let's bring in a washer right next to this guy. File, import. Let's see where it saved it. Looking for SketchUp, items, components. Let's see, where did it save it? <laughs> well, it's important to pay attention to where you're saving stuff. Eh, oh well. But if I was to import, something else, say, one of these components, such as my 20-pound Speed Queen equipment, you could then bring it into any model just like that. Okay, all right, um, that's enough for now. Thanks for watching.